Hey everyone, the name is Eric Dor, and I'm here to talk to you today about the INFJ mentalist archetype. And yes, the INFJ is not an empath, but a mentalist. An INFJ can not only take on other people's perspectives and understand, understand people's deeper intentions, but also their own. An INFJ can also guide and be an influencer in society, a storyteller, that through their voice and through their actions and through their strong kind of conduct can shape and can influence how we all live and how we all treat each other as a human collective, how we all live on this planet, how we treat this planet and why we do it, towards what vision, towards what purpose, towards what long-term end goal. And in this, I want to tell you one thing. The self-actualized INFJ reads a person, influences a person with empathy, skillful storytelling, the self-actualized INFJ is a mentalist or a kind of magician, almost. Archetypally portrayed as the person that understands the whole of humanity and can see the bigger picture, the bigger perspective, the bigger vision, the bigger long-term goal that we are all headed towards, the future of the world, our vision, what we are headed towards as a collective, and also how to guide and oversee this process to ensure that it happens in a way that is with respect to human nature, to how we are feeling, to who we are as a people, and to what we can be at our very, very best. As an INFJ, you often struggle with feeling in a way lost, as if you don't know where you are going. Too sensitive to keep walking forward, too full of questions to ever offer any kind of answers, too unsure of what the right question is. Too unsure of how to phrase this question and how to speak it and how to express it to other people in a way that will help them, guide them forward. In a way that they can understand and deal with at their level and where they are in life. This is the question that I've been wrestling with all my life as an INFJ. I want to understand people. I want to be a positive influence to the community around me. I want to be a positive influence to humanity. It is as if my life goal is to be a kind of philosopher, empath, diplomat and visionary at the same time. And I think that in short is a mentalist or a magician. I'm going to guide you through the top four processes of the INFJ mind. Starting with introverted intuition. INFJs embody a mix of all these traits and you need to look at the sum of it all and how it all intersects and how it all combines to understand how an INFJ truly is. These are the parts of the INFJ. Introverted intuition, a representation of the intuitive part of the INFJ and the top-down part of the INFJ. INFJs like to go into and to envision a personal perspective of something. To see before them how another person thinks or feels. To walk through somebody else's process. And this introverted intuitive process often starts in privacy. To access this function you need to have privacy. You need to take a step back from a situation. You can't see another person's perspective while you are looking and staring at them. You have to take a step back and be detached to understand. And so INFJs understand other people from a point of view that is detachment. INFJs use introverted intuition, going inside, looking at and searching for questions and answers to various questions about the world. And INFJs use this introverted intuitive process as if they were philosophers, asking and formulating questions. Introverted intuition starts with a question, not an answer. Why this? Why that? Why does that person do this? Why does that person say that? So why is that the fundamental drive of an INFJ? The INFJ is one of the types that will always start with questions and answering questions and finding answers to questions. And so it's like you dedicate your entire life to the search for questions rather than answers. Introverted intuition is a perspectives-oriented process. It's seeing a perspective. It's like simulating, running a simulation of something. It's like just being in that situation as if you are in that very situation, just understanding it. 
uh, and that is kind of what allows you this almost illusion of being inside somebody else's head and thinking their thoughts and being that person and walking through their actions everything you know about them what kind of actions might they have taken why might they have taken that action what made them do it INFJs are commonly said to be introverted intuitives first but that is only true for an INFJ that hasn't become self-actualized and in fact when you start integrating and understanding other perspectives when you start going into other functions, you start noticing you have an affinity for them as well. Introverted feeling is a function that INFJs have an equal affinity for. And some INFJs with the right development in the right situation might come to be stronger with this function than they might with introverted intuition. Not all INFJs have given themselves the privacy or the bigger picture in the sense that helps them understand. Some INFJs start from the position of uh, introverted feeling, which is more naturally connected to am empathy and intention. Introverted feeling is at the heart of it all driven by intention and purpose in a sense of identifying your intentions, identifying your purpose. What is my purpose? What am I meant to do? Is there something that I am meant to do? Uh, introverted feeling types believe they have this personal vision or this personal self that they must act out, perform to the world. They must show something of themselves. They must dig inside. They must introspect. They must gain interpersonal awareness of who they are, what their thoughts are, what their experiences are, and then they must share it with people. So introverted feeling is a core part of an INFJ's empathy, and it is together with introverted intuition that an INFJ can engage in this process commonly known as the empath process. The reason uh, INFJs are often misinterpreted as being empaths is because they miss the influential part of the INFJ brain, the judging part of the INFJ, the goal-oriented part of the INFJ. INFJs have one singular vision or this kind of visionary drive, this drive to be original. And this drive emanates from intuition and judging. Being an intuition and being an intuitive and judging type gives you an affinity for the complex, the deep, the unknown that is in front of you, that you are headed towards, the unknown that we are all a part of, this bigger whole, this kind of universe that we are all living in. And it is intuition and judging that helps you understand and access this part of the world, you know, this part that we haven't explored yet. Intuition and judging tells you where you need to go and explore. Intuition and judging tells you what path you need to walk to get somewhere. If introverted feeling says this is my purpose, intuition and judging says this is how you get there. So intuition and judging starts with a search or with the seeker's brain, the lost person, the lost wanderer. So the INFJ engages in this process through independence. Independence is the core need for an INFJ. Independence is when you can walk your own path towards your own goal, even if other people don't understand it, even if other people think you're starting in the wrong end, or if you should start somewhere else, or if you should uh, get an education first, or if you should uh, work first, or if you should do this or that, or take on your father's business, or... You know, all those things that other people lay out for you. Other people may have an idea of what you should do and they might give you opportunities. They might say, hey, I your friends may come up with opportunities for you, new job offers, new possibilities. Your work or school might tell you you should study this, you're good at that, you should do that, you should go in that direction. You should study at this in this kind of way according to this method. But INFJs need to invent their own methods. They need to have originality in their life. They need originality in order to feel alive and to feel energy and to feel momentum. And it is when they stop themselves from having this that they start feeling stressed or blocked or like they can't get forward or if they lack the energy. INFJs that embody and take on too much of society's demands and wishes in that sense and compromises their own independence stop, start moving forward a lot more slowly. And they might feel even that there is something wrong with them. Why am I not moving faster? Why am I not do getting through this? Because, well, you're not getting through this for one simple reason. Because your mind is constantly pulling you in another direction. You're telling yourself you ought to be doing this. 
because of society, school, pragmatic reasons. But your mind is constantly pulling in the other direction. It's like pulling you. And it's a kind of obsession. Yeah, intuitive judges all often have issues with obsession, almost obsessiveness, compulsive thinking about this thing they want to be doing. And to be honest, this obsession only becomes stronger the more you suppress it. The more you try to put it down or ignore it, the more strong these thoughts become. And that is why it's so difficult at times to be an INFJ. Because society has this recipe, it's laid out for you. And you feel so stupid for wanting to go in that irrational direction. And you feel stupid, even when you're walking towards that, you're walking towards that, and you can't explain it to other people. Other people ask you, what are you doing? Why are you not following life's recipe? And as an INFJ, you go, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Why? I just, I just want to do this. It's like, that's just how it is. I just want to walk this path, and that's the struggle. And that leads us to the last core aspect of the INFJ, and that is the feeling and judging aspect of the INFJ. A lot of INFJs miss their own voice, don't realize their own voice, and you know, no type cares so much about how as an INFJ. How do I say this? How do I communicate this? How do I express this? How do I do this? According to what conduct, you know? It's not about the logistics, it's not about resources, it's not about strategy, it's not about, you know, executing it smartly or according to strict recipe or so on. It's about how, like, what kind of person do I want to be? How do I want other people to see me? How do I want to impact other people? What am I to other people? What should I be to other people? What can I do to help others? You know, that core desire to help, to be of help to other people. Sometimes INFJs are mistaken to be Enneagram 2 types, but Enneagram 2 types are driven to be nice, where INFJs are driven to be kind. Feeling and judging is the drive to be kind, in a sense of wanting to do something for another person purely because it gives you something to do something not, uh, good for another person. It has an internal satisfaction component as an INFJ and that doesn't necessarily make you a two. Uh, you can be kind but you can still be rude towards another person. You can be kind but you can still hurt and stir up another person's feelings. You can be kind even if you sometimes if being kind means standing up way and letting other people do their own thing. And the two wouldn't understand that. The two feels a compulsive drive to be nice, no matter if it is kind or not, because they need other people to depend on them. Where an INFJ may or may not have this need to be depended on by other people. So INFJ twos will have this need, but not all INFJs will be twos. I hope that makes sense and I hope that can clarify some of the differences. Another part to understand this, and I've said this in my INFJ empath video or my video on empaths, that INFJs and INFPs as well, uh, that don't develop their own voice, that don't develop their own vision, that uh, stop themselves from moving forward, that uh, are afraid or that are in some ways um, afraid of speaking out or of letting their voice be heard out of fear of being misunderstood often become too focused on other people's needs they become pure empaths kind of therapists for other people purely resigned to hearing what other people think and understanding and helping others never ever exerting or showing other people what you need or what you want and it is what you want that brings up that influential part of being an INFJ that's yeah, as an INFJ, you do have a natural urge to st tell stories, to get people to laugh and to think and to feel, to get people to understand. As a kid, I would constantly tell my friends stories, uh, fantasy, I would write fiction, and I would want other people to read it, and I would want other people to be inspired by it. If I got other people to write, that was perfect. If I got other people to think or to understand something about themselves, that made me happy. So that's what I lived to do, just to share stories with other people as well and to talk about what I was passionate about and to get people towards it. You know, as a politician, I would also get a kick out of that being an important person to another pe to other people, you know, getting people to be passionate about something, getting people to feel included in something, to build a community, to get people to feel connected to one another. And that was such a core part of the INFJ lifestyle and what being an INFJ was. 
that it should be discussed more, but it's really not. It's misunderstood, it's forgotten. And yeah, I associate the INFJ process with a form of magic, the most human, most natural form of magic, in the sense that it's about influencing true words, making people do things just by being able to talk to them, by just being able to guide them, getting people to do things they didn't think was possible, getting people to achieve things that they wouldn't have otherwise, and through your voice to shape the world around you. And there, it's the distinction from an INTJ who dedicates themselves to hard work to make the world better. The INFJ instead makes people laugh, makes people feel, makes people care. And through subtle words and choices in how you speak and how you act, suddenly the world around you becomes a little more magical, a little more strange, a little more bizarre, but also a little better. And it is that INFJs as idealists in so many ways that embody and create and do impossible things, you know, <laughs> dedicating themselves towards pursuits nobody could ever understand with intuition and judging and finding answers and seeing things inside people that other people thought they, thought they were hid hiding from you, thought you couldn't see, thought you wouldn't understand. And that is the kind of magic INFJs practice and you should devote yourself to mastering that magic and to use it wisely, with purpose and with the right intentions. So as an INFJ, your core goal should be an understanding of your true purpose and understanding of how the world works from a bigger picture to see other people's perspectives and to see your own perspectives to see and to dedicate yourself towards your vision, no matter how original or how absurd it might sound or how hard it is to explain to other people, and to live with good ethics through strength of code of conduct in a way that is true to your beliefs and to your ideals and to who you want to be as a person. As you understand this project, feel free to browse through my videos on the INFJ archetype and on other personality types Get to know these processes in yourself, see how they reflect you, see how you relate to them in comparison to other ways of living and find a way to be true to yourself, to be happy, to be self-actualized. That is the core of my project, to help people understand themselves and to help people become actualized. If you like this video or this project, feel free to support me on Patreon or to leave a comment or to share this video with other people you think should hear it. Thank you for watching and see you guys in the next video.